So I thought I'd do a video on selecting a microcontroller from microchip. And here's a few that I have. They come in about 10 different sizes. Um, this is being the largest one that you can get in this form factor, which is a P-dip with all the little legs on it. This is actually the smallest that you can get. Well, one of the smallest. And um, they all have different things that they do. They're all microcontrollers, by the way. And a microcontroller in a nutshell is something that runs complete with power. Of course, you add power to the two legs, maybe a ground and a five volts, and you can have anything you want happen from there. It's got its own memory. It's got its own IO port. It's got its own clock. It's got everything inside it. It's complete. Um, so in saying that, um, let's see if we can figure out how we can select a microcontroller without all the confusion because there are probably a thousand of these microcontrollers you can buy from microchip alone and they come in 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, they come in surface mount, they come in oh, so many different choices. So anyhow, I'm going to try and break it down the way I usually look for a chip. Um, for a starter, the first thing I look for is something I can pick up. If I can pick it up, I can use it because surface mount becomes very difficult. I can mount this inside my uh, or onto my little programmer very easily. I can put it into my project very easily. So I like this form factor and this is called a PDIP. Um, so that's the first attribute that I look for when I'm trying to select a chip. It has to be something I can pick up. There are chips that you cannot get this form factor anymore. Another thing I look for, um, because I'm a hobbyist, I look for something that's easy to work with. And again, an 8-bit microcontroller is easy to work with. When you get into 16-bit or 32-bit microcontrollers, you end up with a lot of complexity and more reading, and it becomes daunting for the beginner. So you probably want to stick with an 8-bit. It doesn't mean that it's a, um, an out, you know, outdated chip or backwards chip. They're making them still in 2022 or 2024 or whatever. It's not 2024 right now. Um, though, this little chip here, that will be like 300 pages of information in a data sheet. This would be like 600 pages. They are both 8-bit microcontrollers and they are very complicated, but you can simplify it down. You don't really have to read all the pages to understand how these work or to use them. Um, I could probably read 30 pages and be able to get either of these chips going, maybe 40 pages. Um, you don't have to read all 800 pages to make this thing work. Um, it's just that it's got so many peripherals and so many features that you would maybe want to pick and choose what you want to read so you can understand how to use those particular features you like. Um, another thing that I look for is, um, apart from those two simple attributes, is how many I.O. ports do you want? If you're building a project that needs 36 I.O. ports, you probably want the 40 pin monstrosity there. But if you're building a project that uses maybe six I.O. ports, you'd probably want to use this poor upside down chip right here that has six I.O. ports. And as you can see, there's two legs here that are used for something else besides the I.O. ports. They are used for the power. One's ground and one's positive voltage, which will roughly be anything from maybe two volts to six volts. It does not need a regulator. Um, actually, I put seven volts into here and they're fine. Um, this right here, actually 36 I.O. ports because I believe two are ground and two are high voltage or the voltage, which are the, the two volts to the 5.5 volts range. Um, so the voltage regulator isn't even necessary with these things. Another thing I look for, um, what else do I look for? Oh, yeah. Um, I know it's funny, but um, when we go looking for these chips, you will find that some chips that Microchip are still offering are outdated. They're 15 years old, and if you get a 15-year-old chip, you'll find that it might be simply outdated next time you go looking for that chip. So you want to have something that's at least current, nothing that's like 15 years old. So they are offered and they're usually creeping up in price because of their age. Um, and finally, the last thing I usually look for is something that's cheaper. Um, why do you want to buy a $4 chip when a $1 chip does the same job? So that's my selection strategy that I use. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly run over and we will look at Oops, what did I just do there? That's pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> just using a piece of software. Um, so I did a, I got a, a free download from Microchip. 
It's called MP Lab XIDE. And this is it right here, the two things. And I pretty much always use the blue one right here um, to buy a, um, some microcontrollers. I'll go through here to build my program. I go through here to read anything I want. I go through this here um, blue download that I got from them. Free again is about 500 megabytes or something like that. Anyhow, you can register for your microchip account right here. And then when you get it, you go over here and you type in your password. Um, and you are good to go. So um, with these, um, they have a few things in here that are useful. The only thing I found useful were these two things. You can buy direct from microchip right here. And you can also get a selector tool here. This is a brief selector tool I'll show you. It's kind of useful for some things. Um, what it's really useful for is explaining what all the features and things are inside these chips. So I just scroll down to the bottom, down to the 32-bit um, selector guide down here. And there's about a 24-page document of propaganda. <laughs> um, they actually sell more than one product line. They sell not just their PIC processors, but Atmel as well. If you go, hey, look at that. <laughs> Would you ever do that? That's a rusty soldering iron, a really thick piece of solder. Oh, who cares? Let's move on. Um, way down here is their selector guide. This is actually not a very good selector guide. Um, the reason I say that is it's not really complete. It doesn't tell you the prices, doesn't tell you a lot of things. But I just want to point it out because every chip offers certain features and some offer more features than others. That's what I want to point out here. But um, it's actually, this is a continuation of the same thing. And yeah, you can, you can look through here and just see what boxes are ticked and which features you want. Maybe you don't want a lot of these features, but anyhow, you should find out what these features mean. There's a bunch of letters and stuff, and that's what I'm really here for. This is the definition of what all these features are. So if you want to skim down this, you should take your time, go through carefully, find out what is offered as far as um, a peripheral or a feature on a microcontroller, and maybe circle the ones you like or write down the ones you want um, are necessary with your project. And um, that would be something very important for you to know when you go looking for a chip. Okay, that's it, I'm out of here. We're going over to the buyer section right here. And um, you'll know that, oops, just, let's first find what we want here. We're looking for an eight bit microcontroller. You can get a 16 bit or a 32 if you want, a 32 bit, but really, Today, we are looking for 8-bit because we like things simple. Go down to the product family down here. And um, right down here is the 8-bit PIC MCU microcontroller units. So I'm going to get the guide, not the guide, the, the selector guide, I guess I call it here. But it's also got all the prices and stuff. So this is actually organized. This is a long sheet organized based on price. So the cheapest ones are at the very top. Uh, of all the 8-bit microcontrollers, and there's about a thousand, maybe 800, I can't remember. There's a lot of these. I'm going to skim looking for only the 8-pin. I think I'll go for, yeah, just an 8-pin microcontroller just to show you what I'm doing here. But as you can see, this is a 6-pin right here, right? This whole stream of three. Um, yeah, let's skim down a little bit. Let's find some 8-pins down here. Um, oh, there's one right there. And there's another one right there. And um, you'll find as you go down, there's 18 pins and eight pins. But we're going in pricing order. So the cheapest ones are at the very top of this list and the more expensive are way down. Actually, how expensive do they get? Let's do a very quick skim to about halfway and you're into two bucks. Okay, that's not hugely expensive, but um, always consider, let me go back to the top again. Always consider that the... Um, the price that you're going to pay for maybe 10 pieces will be about 60 to 80 percent of this price right here it's not bad so you're paying maybe in this case maybe 60 cents maybe 80 cents for something that you only want to have two uh, 10 pieces or 20 pieces of but anyhow where was i going i was looking for like an eight pin there's some eight pins right here and yeah um, but let's just concentrate on one chip just so we can have something to talk about here. So this is a 50, 
cent chip right here, 51 cent chip right here. Um, what I want to point out also is um, some of these chips, you see this one right here? It's also a eight pin and it's, it says in production, please consider a device something. I will not look at this chip because when they're suggesting me looking for another chip, it means it's going out of production and you should be looking for something else because this price can ramp up to easily twice as much, maybe four times as much. And it becomes um, maybe eventually obsolete. So don't consider these chips that have this sort of thing right here. Look at the chips that just, um, you know, they, they don't have all that sort of um, we're shutting down feeling to them. So um, again, there's a whole bunch of information here. You can see, for instance, this chip we're, that we're looking at right here, it has um, 3.5 kilobytes of program memory, which means you can program or you can put in 3,500 instructions in your program. That's a lot. I think the largest I've ever used was maybe 500, maybe 500, and that was a huge lookup table. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, RAM, which is basically your um, your registers in your your program. So you have 256 bytes of registers. I probably only used maybe 20 or 30 registers max on any program I've ever built. There's no EEPROM in this one, but they do have eight pin like we were looking for. Maximum CPU speed is 32 megabytes. This one actually has an internal oscillator and it can run anywhere from 32 megabytes to 32 kilohertz megabytes. I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong terminology. Okay, 32 megahertz. So this here runs between 32 megahertz and 32 kilohertz, um, which means actually, if you wanna understand it quickly, um, every instruction takes four cycles of the clock. So in this example here, um, 32 megahertz, that would be 8 million instructions per second that this microcontroller could run um, if it helps you understand what kind of speed you need. Um, oh, okay, this one has one comparator but doesn't have any operational amplifiers. As you can see, I can skim along here like this and I can read more about what's inside there. It has some analog to digital converters. This one has five and they're 10 bit resolution. That's kind of nice. One of 1000 resolution and it has some digital to analog converters uh, with only five bit resolution and some timers and some hardware stuff yeah so you, as you skim along you can see what they have obviously this is not a complete list of all the details it's a just a generalized the 20 most popular points that you want to look at obviously at the very end it tells you it is in a, in a p-dip form factor which i like not in the in it, but also you can get them in the surface mount form factors as well. Um, yeah, voltage range. You can run between, in this example, 1.8 volts all the way up to 5.5 volts. That's pretty nice. Um, if you're ever curious, the temperature range can be usually um, minus 40 all the way up to positive 125 Celsius. If you're American, you know, Fahrenheit's a little different. But, you know, it's funny, minus 40 in Celsius is the same as minus 40 in Fahrenheit. Bet you didn't know that. So anyhow, these two buttons here, this button right here, more information, gives you some information about what's inside the chip briefly at a glance. You can skim that if you want. You can even click on this and get a whole bunch of more information down here. And um, you can skim down here for exactly the same stuff. And it just tells you in a different way um, people always look for different things when they're looking for a microcontroller. One thing I think is very important, um, right here is the complete data sheet. It's a PDF download of 541 pages for this 8-pin chip. By the way, obviously you can see that this data sheet is for an 8-pin chip and a 14-pin chip. Um, one is called the 153313 and the other one is called a 15323. Obviously, just more pins and a bit more memory probably on that larger chip there. But anyhow, the first three pages, very important. You want to skim this. It'll tell you stuff like um, its core features and uh, memory and how much is in there and the peripherals that you might be interested in. It's got some 10-bit um, pulse width modulators and some um, communication-styled uh, features. Yeah, you would skim it. Like I say, the first three pages are useful stuff. Um, that's another way of looking at it. 
Uh, obviously the first one is the eight pin one at the very top. The other ones are like larger chips. And uh, yeah, so that's one um, thing to look at. I, oh wait, by the way, I always look at this right down here. The date the chip was manufactured. This one here, I can see on this page, it's 2017, probably 2019 for one of the chips and 2017 when first introduced. But good to know stuff like that, um, just so you don't outdate yourself too quickly. So if you want to buy a chip from this guy, 50, or from microchip, it's 51 cents, but if you bought 5,000 of them, what does it cost to buy just 10? Um, so um, I think our accounts are probably all the same when we first start off as, as hobbyists. But as you can see um, for this chip here, if I want to buy just 10 between one and 24, it'd be about $1.25 or $1.12. Uh, but interesting enough, even at 5,000, it's 81 cents. So the form factor is actually more expensive when you have a P-dip versus let's say a surface mount, like this one right here. Um, it's a little bit cheaper because they just mass produce these ones and they're down to 81 cents instead of um, $1.12. And yeah, you just basically put your number in there, add it to the cart. They're hoping you'll buy a thousand. <laughs> um, but um, this is your chip you're buying right here. I want you to know this, that the E stands for extended temperature range. Um, and it's, it's the one that goes up to 125 Celsius. Uh, the regular one, which is the I, it only goes up to 85, which is fine. I usually use the I. It saves you about seven cents, eight cents when you buy it. There's also another thing. There's an F version and an LF version. The LF is the low powered version, which really only starts at about 1.8 volts and goes up to about uh, 3.6 volts or something like that. Um, great for using less energy, but it's not that you can't use the F for battery powered uses as well. I can make a, an F last for several years on a pair of AA batteries, so it's not a big deal, but you could get you know, 10 years, 20 years <laughs> out of um, a set of batteries on the LF version. But uh, yeah, as you skim down, you can see the difference. Here's a, um, a an, an I industrial version of the same device and it only uses 85 or only works at 85 Celsius or lower. Um, anyhow, uh, obviously there's a whole bunch of types of form factors and chips to choose from. You merely select the quantity, they mail it to you, and you have a chip. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I thank you very much for watching.